Hi, Phil Aston here from Now Spinning Magazine with another unboxing video this time. And this is Rat, The Atlantic Years, from 1984 to 1990. I'm going to be looking at the vinyl set, which really has the wow factor. Um, as soon as this arrived, I thought, wow, and looked at what was inside. And also the CD box as well. Um, so I'm going to go through both. And I'm also, because I know some of you will be asking, well, you know, what's the remastering, what, all, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to do that at the end. I think at this stage, what I should do is dive straight in and show you what's in this and what's in that. So this is the unboxing of the Rat Atlantic Years box sets on both the CD variant and the vinyl set as well. Um, so the CD set, the artwork is very, very similar. I'm going to go through them for, um, each in turn. And I think I'll start with the CD set first of all basically both sets contain the rat atlantic years 1984 to 1990 and um the albums are out of the cellar invasion of privacy dancing on the cover reach for the sky and detonator so the cd set is very similar in design to the skid row set docken and motley crew so if you've bought those in turn this will sit well on your on your shelves they're quite minimalistic. There's no booklet in the CD set. It's a sturdy box um, and the CDs themselves are simple open they have digi packs. There's no fold out panels. There's no booklets in an inner sleeve here. It's just a simple piece of card with the credits on behind the disc is a bigger picture of, of, of the front cover or detail of the front cover uh, and the tracks on the back um, and it's the same for Invasion of your privacy, fold out the pictures that was on the back of the cover, if I remember rightly, track titles on the back. And again, um, this has just got some more credits behind the CD in this case. That's Invasion of your privacy, then the next one was Dancing Under Cover. Again, uh, just the details there, so it's just a simple card, more the track titles behind the CD in this case, and the back cover. And the last but one, Reach for the Sky, a uh, picture of the band, just the logo, tracks and credits, and the last one, Detonator. Again, very simple affair. And I think there's a picture of the band hiding behind here, and there is. Um, so there's no information on whether they're remastered, but to be honest, they sounded re they sound really good anyway. Um, so that is the cd box so very simple affair just digipacks nice box if you bought the others but where all the action is is with the vinyl set and this really does have the wow factor and this is the set that has all the extras so i know some of you who are cd only will be wondering which one to buy or what what's happening here this comes with the cds but the vinyl set comes with a lot more. And some of these albums, of course, for me personally, um, I didn't buy them on vinyl after the second album. And so I hadn't had them on vinyl before. And this comes with, as I say, this is the wow factor. Not only is it the records, uh, on all on 180 um, gram black vinyl, includes interesting i'd say black vinyl because it's sometimes rarer to find black vinyl and they sound great it includes a rare seven inch of the 1991 nobody rides for free single a 16 page replica tour book with never before seen behind the scenes photos from rats personal archives a poster a bumper sticker backstage pass and a plectrum so this is a nice very sturdy box with the rat logo on the inside and also in the lower part of the box as well this is the sheet that was stuck on the back of it, which tells, shows you all the tracks and the pictures and shows you what's included. So if you see this in the store, that's what will be attached to the back. First thing I have in here is a vintage poster, um, probably from the first, yeah, we're looking from the pictures, this would be the first album from 1984. So that's a nice piece. I've got a Invasion of Your Privacy Access World Tour 1985 to 1986 Access or Areas little badge to put on to wear around your neck when you're playing the album. A bumper sticker, stick on your car, so all the people coming up behind you know you're a rat fan. 
a rat plectrum guitar pick superb the single no one rides for free which is again on uh, is it on black vinyl i think it is it is um and it's the same track on both sides but again it's nice touch i don't know whether this had a different picture sleeve or even it was ever released differently but um that's from 1991 from the motion picture point break and then if i can get this out it's the booklet nice really glossy um paper album size um and lots of pictures in here that as i say from the band's personal archive so lots of stuff in you probably haven't seen unless it's been shared on social media over the years um but this is you know for a rap fan uh, i think this is wonderful stuff to look at lots of stuff going all the way through the band's atlantic years period in history some of you will be thinking well it's just photographs but Again, a lot of these have not been seen before and it really brings together um, the feel uh, of, of this set and of the albums and the period. And for those of you rap fans, I think this is excellent. And again, as you see what's happening with the CD box, this is a real addition because this wasn't this kind of thing wasn't in the Dockin set or the Motley Crue set, um, but it's with the rap one and I think it's really, really good. So the albums themselves, as I say, are on... 180 gram vinyl, if I can, I'll just have to ease them out separately so I don't crease the covers. As you see, you've got RAT logo at the back. But they're really good card. I've got this on vinyl um, and it came with a simple paper sleeve. Um, and so this is more sturdier card. Just a red inner, inner sleeve. And as I say, the pressings are, are really good. Um, they've got the album uh, artwork on the inner, inner part of the label. Um, so that was the first one from 84, The Invasion of Your Privacy. I think this has had a more glossy original. The card was glossy, but it doesn't matter. They've, they've kept the look and finish for all of them. Um, and again, the picture on the, in the center, instead of being Atlantic Records, now has the picture of the album itself. The next one, Dancing Undercover. So you can see how, how the CD covers have, have been pulled together based on what was with the vinyl set, really. Um, but I, I like the fact that the artwork is in the center of the label. Um, as I said, they're, they're all great pressings, good sturdy card, 180 gram. The last one, no, it isn't last but one. It's got a picture of the band, Reach for the Sky. And again, the picture of the inner label. And in the last one is Detonator. Which again has the artwork on the label. And that is the Rat vinyl box set from 1984-1991. And now I'll give you my thoughts about what I think of it. So that's Rat. Atlantic years and I've had some comments and some emails already saying Phil this is how record companies are ripping people off because this has only recently been out and some of you watching this going huh? I know what you mean you're talking about the Atlantic years which came out on H&E records the cherry red imprint in 2020 which doesn't seem that long ago does it um, so basically this is that now what you've got to try and understand, and I'm saying this for collectors of all ages, probably younger music fans probably won't see this the same way as older music fans like me may. You have to go back to a time when if I bought the, the first Rainbow Arm in 1975, I could go to the racks in 1985 and look for R and Rainbow and it would have its own little section. I could buy the first Rainbow album 10 years after its release. I could go to any record shop. Well, yes, I could. And it would be there with Rainbow Rising and probably to right the way through the 80s. And in fact, even when it was the CD age, I could go through to HMV in 1995 or maybe even um 2005 and there it would be again 
But physical music has changed. It's a niche, as I talk about here. We are a niche, it's powerful, and it's for people that love music, but things don't hang around as much as they did. And also, a lot of labels buy the licensing for music for a certain period of time, then they have to hand the license back. So for those of you who might be thinking, oh, well, uh, you know, this, this was out on Cherry Red. It was. Whether this is still available, I don't know. Whether there's still some stock left, I don't know. But now the rights are with BMG and this these sets are limited to 5,000 copies worldwide. So that story that I've just said about the first Rainbow album, you could buy it 10 years later. These won't be here. These may not be here within a few months weeks depending on how successful it is but for the vinyl sets as you've just seen literally you know everything's been thrown at this you know except the kitchen sink and it looks superb and so in this respect the cd set is a very simple affair as you just saw it's just simple digi packs and whatever but the vinyl set as you've just seen is spectacular uh, I didn't. I don't have um, the the. I only have two of the original ones. Um, I have out of the cellar, so I could actually, while I'm looking at this, just show you the, the difference in the manufacturing. I suppose. Um, so bear with me, because this might be useful for some of you sitting on the fence, and whether you want to buy it or not. Of course, my plectrum is just falling on the floor. Can't lose that. So the first one is um, in my, which I'm calling the wonderful box set, um, is this. So my original now, we know you have a romanticism to do with vinyl. Oh, the glory days, blah, blah, blah. This was the eighties. And look at this. Can you see this is the original before the, those of you romantically looking back and going, oh, well. It's quite themes, th flimsy card, really. This is 1984. The CD was probably on the cusp of coming over the horizon. Um, yeah, we we got polyline sleeve, but the actual vinyl itself um, was really bendy. And this is a great sounding album, OK? I don't mean like that, but it is. So this feels like a <laughs> final records came out like this in the 80s. Um, this is a really solid, fit. just like when I did the Dock and Unboxing. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, because I'm so used to feeling the, the original, um, this is solid, solid album. Um, it really is. And the, the next one, um, The Invasion of Your Privacy, which I've got um, nearby as well. Mine's looking quite... Well, it, it had a shiny cover, didn't it, uh, the originals? But again, um, it was really bendy and it just feel, it feels like, I suppose, new vinyl sets like this. If I can get that one out as well. Bear with me. Yeah, got it. They do feel substantial. They really do. If you're someone who bought all of them at the same time originally, do you need to do this again? You probably don't, do you? But this is aimed at people who probably never bought them all at, at the time. And now you can, and they are in really, really high quality card. And you, and again, with the vinyl, as you've just seen, you've got the stickers and the backstage pass. You might think, oh, it's like extra things you don't need. I like it. I like the poster. And I absolutely love the book. I absolutely love the book. Um, I think the book... I think any vinyl set that comes with, well, obviously single, but comes with, um, you know, album-sized booklets are a treat for the eyes. Now, one of the things that I found interesting when, when looking at the stats for this is that um, the way that the albums had actually sold, which I think it tells you more, ironically, on the, on the first set, doesn't it? On the CD set, rather, is that Out of the Cellar was three times platinum. Invasion of Privacy was two times platinum. Dancing on the Cover was platinum. And Reach of the Sky was platinum. And Detonator was gold. Now, now that will give the impression that it was diminishing returns for, for Rat. But I, I totally disagree. 
I think what happened was, um, is that by the time, as they went through this period of their career, um, there was more and more competition. In 1984, there was Bon Jovi who wasn't there, and yeah, there was there was Dokken, but there wasn't as many as the so-called hair metal bands as there was going to be within literally this it's literally this five-year period. Uh, at that time in 1984, it was new, it was shiny, and, and rat were, were trailblazing. I mean, you know, the Add to the Cellar, which is such a, you know, a fantastic album. You know, it really, really is. Um, you know, Wanted Man, You're in Trouble. You're in Trouble. You see, it might be seen as a deep cut. It's only a second track in. But that guitar sound, you know, the guitar sound you know, from, from Warren de Martini, it's, it's, it's just... Sorry, I said his name wrong there, and I'm, in case Warren ever watches this. Warren de Martini. What a great guitar player. Absolutely fantastic. And that song in particular, You're in Trouble, I think I tried to get that guitar sound with the bands I was in as soon as I heard this. And Bue Hill, the production... When grunge came along, of course, he couldn't get arrested. But during this period, he was so much in demand because lack of communication, that riff, which was really, really full on heavy metal. Um, but, you know, Round and Round was almost pop metal. It was very different in the UK. We saw this as heavy metal, in, and in the US, these were becoming like pop singles, weren't they? But for us, you know, this this was a such um, an amazing album. Every Every single track was killer. It really, really was. And the way they looked, everything about them. Of course, by the t as each one came by, they influenced more and more bands, more and more, band, more, more record labels thought, we need a band that looks like Rat. And so more and more bands started to look like each other. And then you, it became harder to differentiate one from the other if you were new into the, the scene. And I think they just got swamped. I don't actually feel that the albums themselves um, were any any less um, and going for going forward um, if I remember rightly I mean just looking at some of the track list and just to jog my memory um, Invasion of Privacy and uh, that was 1985 You're in Love and Laid Down those are the main tracks aren't they but that guitar riff that opening song I remember sitting down with my mates I, I wasn't the first person who bought that um, one of my mates bought it and played him and he said, listen to this. And I just thought it was absolutely incredible. And still is to this day, 1985. And now we're in 2023 at the time of doing this video. And these, these albums, to me, sound crisp and powerful, emotive and absolutely, it's timeless. And I think that's why it's been so hard for you know, for a lot of new bands that are going forward to get beyond this because of the way rock and roll sounded back then and the way it was recorded. And I think, you know, those two, Out of the Cellar, which I've just gone through almost every track, and The Invasion of Privacy also is fantastic. But the next one up, Dancing Undercover 1986, um, you know, it's, uh, was it Drive Me Crazy and um, Looking for Love? You know, they, again... They're all fun. They're all they're all really really good. Um, I, and and uh, reach for the sky. I played that just before doing this. Chain reaction. I want a woman. Um, all excellent. What to, got the chart positions in this book? The booklet's fantastic. And um, you know the, the first one, number seven in the UK, US album charts. Twelve in Canada. I mean, I remember. I, I just remember everybody buying these rat albums and as we went through i think again the reason why i didn't buy uh, albums three four and five was not because it was not because i didn't think they were any good it was just there was so much to buy at that time there were so many bands that sounded similar great and my money would only go so far which is why as as a rock and roll collector a multi, multi format man I now have the I now have the chance I now have the chance to have the whole set on vinyl, and my original albums are a bit tired. They've they've lived a rock and roll life, <laughs> you know. An album from nineteen eighty four um, in Party Zone um, isn't as isn't as shiny as the cover may suggest. Um, so here I have 
all of them, all of the Rat albums now in prime 180 gram pressing condition with a book, with a pick, with a poster. And so that's what these are like, isn't it? I think I can dispose of this thing now. But this is what these are. They are memory boxes, rock and roll memory boxes. Um, and all the labels can sometimes be criticised for doing things like this as a jump on the, you know, you could say they're jumping on the bandwagon to exploit the fans. I, you have a choice. As I said at the start of this review, you have a choice. There are only 5,000 of these. So if you are a rap fan, and I've shown you this set and what you get for it, because it could be like the others, which were great as well, but they was basically vinyl in a box. This is vinyl in a box with other things. And for me personally, sometimes I might be playing the albums and I'm walking up and down the house and playing my guitar and doing other things. But other times I sit down on the sofa, I, I crank up the volume and I sit down and I've got something to look at and flick through and enjoy to enhance the, the experience of listening with my ears and looking through my eyes and feeling through my fingers as I go through the package. And I think in, in this particular case, for those of you who are multi-format people, um, the vinyl set wins, period. Yes, it's, it's, it's a lot more expensive, but you get a lot more for your money. Um, and so, yes, the vinyl set in this case wins. And you know I am very much a supporter of the CD. So the CD box set is for those of you who are collecting this period of rock history and you've bought the, the Dockin set and the Motley Crue set and the Skid Row set, then yes, this will look perfect on your shelves. But if you're the vinyl people, then this, I think on this one, I've got to say that BMG have pulled out all the stops and I've created a higher water line for them to jump over next depending on which band from this period they decide to go for next but of course i mean i follow stephen percy on uh, on linkedin and he's he was at the band were involved in this and, and you can tell from the the posts that are coming out that they're proud of it they're proud of their legacy and they're proud that they've been involved in this um and they so they should be and you know seeing those pictures from their private archives it just adds to it adds it together I don't need to know the rock and roll stories of the text. I, I can piece that together myself. But all the albums sound great. They look great. They are great. So that is Rat, The Atlantic Years, 1984 to 1990 and 1991. Now, for the eagle-eyed amongst you, probably just may have spotted that. But why does that say 1990 on the CD set? And this says... 1991. Is it a typo? It is not. The eagle, eye will, the eagle eyed amongst you will know that's because the vinyl box set includes the single from the soundtrack of Point Break, which was 1991. So you get extra stuff and an extra year to the Atlantic years with Rat. So thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing. Please become a member, join the YouTube community, or become a patron and support Now Spinning Magazine. Take care, remember music is the healer and the doctor, and I shall see you on my next video.